What is up guys? So it's been a while since I've done a YouTube video. A lot has been going on behind the scenes, but I will update you guys on a lot of cool news coming very soon. But I will tell you, we got new merch that literally dropped today. If you guys wanna check that out, there will be a link down below in the description. Connor and I wanted to do a video on some of our favorite features of Adobe Premiere 2020. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So for me, hands down, my favorite feature of Adobe Premiere 2020 has to be the new auto reframe tool. So as you know, as a content creator, we put out a lot of videos on YouTube, but what about Instagram or Snapchat, Twitter? We wanna repurpose some of our content. So with the auto reframe tool, the way it works is it takes, say for example, your 16 by nine timeline, and what it does is it resizes it to the aspect ratio that you choose, and it keeps everything that's important, for example, people, objects, in the center of the frame, and what it does, it creates a keyframe, and it moves things automatically. It actually works very good. So the way you do it is you right click on your sequence and you select auto reframe. From there, you select the aspect ratio. So for example, you can select nine by 16, one by one, or you can even create a custom aspect ratio. From there, you can select how fast the movement is. So if you're doing something like crazy drone shots, you can select fast, or if it's kind of something a little bit more slow, you just select the slow movement, and then all you do is hit apply, and it auto magically resize your footage to the aspect ratio that you selected. Now, something that's really cool, even if you have motion graphics or text in your sequence, it will automatically resize that too, which is pretty amazing. Now, speaking of text, Connor will be going over the latest update in motion graphic for Premiere 2020. So as Armando said, in Premiere 2020's update, motion graphics are getting a lot of love, which is very appreciated by me as an editor because before, if I wanted to animate text, I'd have to go into Adobe After Effects, which is a whole new program to learn. It would take way too much time to do kind of simple animations, and I really just didn't have any way to do it in Premiere Pro, so I kind of just ignored it entirely. But what's really cool about this update is that companies like Smash Workshop are taking advantage of this and doing these really cool integrated templates right into Premiere Pro. For example, they have this thing called the text builder. So what I can do is I can go into my graphics window and easily drag and drop their template directly into my timeline and just kind of work my way from top to bottom to come out with this really nice clean animation. Some of the cool things that you can do just kind of off the top of my head is you can have it ease in and ease out or overshoot. You can add motion blur, you can have it expand, you can have it do like a typewriter effect and a plethora of other options as well. But it doesn't stop there with text. You can also do shape animation so something really cool that they're doing with shape animations you can do kind of all the same things that you could do with text but they have this other thing called stroke continuous animation so what I'm able to do is kind of take the stroke outline of a shape and animate it around the shape itself giving you this really cool effect that kind of draws the attention of your viewer into kind of what you're wanting them to look at I know this all kind of seems a little bit confusing, but trust me, as you kind of just work your way top to bottom, it all kind of is self-explanatory and it really makes sense. It's pretty easy to get through. You might also notice that there's an Instagram icon here. What's really cool is that they have this thing called Custom Image Builder, where you can actually upload your own images to the template and then drag and drop them into your timeline and animate them in the exact same way. This is really good for YouTubers if you have like your own logo or social media and you're just wanting to kind of spice it up to make them look that much nicer. So overall the motion graphic update to Premiere Pro 2020 was much needed and companies like Smash Workshop taking advantage of this I think it's really awesome. By the way, special thanks to Smash Workshop for sponsoring today's video. Now something that I'm actually happy to see is that Premiere is now supporting newer cameras. For example, the Panasonic S1H, if you have that camera, you can edit that in Adobe Premiere. You also have the Sony Venice V4 camera support, Canon XF HEVC, and the brand new upcoming Canon C500, which is actually cool because we plan to get one in December when it finally comes out. That was actually a big problem when I had the Canon C200. It took over a year for Adobe Premiere to fully support the RAW, and that was a big problem. So it's nice to know that when we get the C500, we will actually be able to edit that in Adobe Premiere. So this one's a short one, but a good one. Audio got an update in Premiere Pro 2020. So now, instead of only being able to increase your volume by six decibels in 2019, which was really annoying, it almost never felt like enough, you can now go to 15 decibels, which is more than double what you were able to get before. 
definitely a welcome upgrade. Hopefully we'll see that continue to increase in future updates. So let's go ahead and talk about the under the hood performance and smaller incremental updates. For example, time remapping, something that we often use. Before you can only go up to 1000%. Well now you can speed ramp things up to 20,000%, which is actually really great for time lapses. And the other thing is Mac support. So before you were able to choose between OpenCL and the Metal Render, now it completely defaults to Metal, which means that it should be a lot more faster, improved performance. And this is actually really good for especially the new 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, which is going to take more advantage of this optimization. Then you also have other codecs or really the Motion JPEG, which was not really an issue in the PC side, but now it fully supported on the Mac side. So Motion JPEG, all forms of Motion JPEG are fully supported. You also have the System Compatibility Report 2.0. So what that does is it lets you know if you need to update any drivers or if there's something wrong with your computer. So this is actually really good because what Adobe is trying to do is making sure that any computer that you're running, uh, Adobe Premiere, is going to be fully optimized. So if there's an issue, you will know about it. So kudos to Adobe for listening to us and making Premiere that much better. Let me know what your favorite feature is. Also make sure to check out Connor's channel. Show some love, let him know that Armando sent you. Also, new merch in the description down below. Thanks again for watching. You guys will catch us in the next one. Adios.